Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. The singer Normani finally announced that she is dropping her album this year. It's been a minute since she's released music, but she is known for her songs like Wild Side and Motivation and Love Lies and Dancing with a Stranger with Sam Smith. But now she's gearing up to release some more music and it's about time, it's about time. And I was wondering when she was gonna drop her album, but she just announced it and the album is called Dopamine. And this was unexpected and I don't know what direction she's gonna go in with this album. From the looks of it, it seems like she's gonna take a more edgy and risque approach. And it does make me a little nervous because I don't know if it's gonna be too risque for my taste. However, I am more interested in the music. I hope the music is good. I really liked Wild Side. I thought it was great. I heard a snippet of her song Candy Paint. I don't know if it's gonna be on the album or not, but that would be a perfect single for her to drop because it's just the perfect up-tempo song for the spring and the summer. But I'm happy that Normani is releasing music finally. She's on this black rocket ship, so she's ready for takeoff and I'm here for it. <laughs> now, I do wanna talk a little bit about her scrubbing her page because prior to her making this announcement, she did scrub her IG page to kind of get her fan base excited for her new music. Now, what was interesting is there was a fan page named Normani Nation who took a screenshot of her scrubbed page and people noticed that this page had access to her IG account. So people are saying that she is running her own Stan account. And this fan page did confirm that yes, her team is running this page. And they also liked some tweets that this is the official Normani fan page. So under this account, all they do is post exclusive Normani content. And if you wanna keep up with her rollout in her new era, this is the page to follow. But some people think it's odd that she and her team are running this fan account. But believe it or not, a lot of celebrities actually run their stan accounts. They at least have a team or a social media manager to run their accounts and release exclusives. So I don't think it's weird, but people are trying to drag her for it. And I've seen some of the comments on the neighborhood talk and the comments are not so nice. But honestly, people don't know how effective it is for celebrities to have social media accounts that put out content and increase engagement and get people interested in what they're doing. They think it's a self drag, but honestly it's marketing and I'm not mad at it. I think Normani needs all of the promotion, even if she's running her own fan account. There is no shame in that. Promote yourself. I'm here for this and I'm here for Normani's new era. I've always said Normani is a star and I wanna be proven right because I've been saying this for years and some people don't believe me, but I still feel like she is a superstar. So I just want her to show the world that. Now I wanna move on and talk about Kelly Rowland who is an established superstar herself. She's a part of the big superstar group, Destiny's Child. She had her own solo success and now she's aiming to be a movie star. In fact, she is starring in Tyler Perry's movie, Mia Culpa and it will be on Netflix February 23rd. But what's interesting is people don't really seem to be talking about Kelly's new movie. It seems like they're talking more about her storming off of the Today Show, and people also keep bringing up Beyonce in her interviews. Recently, she was on V103 promoting her movie, and the host, Big Tigger, wanted to ask her about Beyonce and the whole Destiny's Child reunion. And you could see that Kelly was over it, honestly. She's over these questions because every time she does an interview, she's always asked about this. She can never just talk about herself. Uh, your sister dropped a whole new uh, couple of songs and it's my understanding that Renaissance 2 may or may not be um, country based. Uh, and then there's a rumor going around that Renaissance 3 may be either rock based or a DC reunion. That is her business to talk about. <laughs> well, we still gotta ask every time we see either you. We never I see Billy. Come on. I know, but just ask them. I'm here talking about Mia Copa. Okay. okay. Talking about new music, you know, all the talk this week has been about Beyonce's new album. Have you heard it yet? Have you had an opportunity to? Give some thoughts on the whole thing? I sure have. It's great. It's absolutely great. Really different though, right? Yes, really different. 
is so that getting back to what I'm here to talk about yes. Claritin um, I'm very <laughs> excited to be teaming up with Claritin so as you can see this has been going on for years this has been a pattern for years and Kelly is over it she's really over it because it's a constant reminder to her that she's not as important as Beyonce this is how mainstream media has made her feel and she has been dealing with this since she was a child since she was in Destiny's Child, she's wanted to shine on her own, but she couldn't because she wasn't the lead singer and the manager of the group, Matthew Knowles, which is Beyonce's father, wouldn't let her step out and shine like that. In fact, the R&B singer RL talked about a time when he was working with Destiny's Child. His group next did a song with Destiny's Child called If You Leave. And Destiny's Child was supposed to do another song for them on their album. And RL wanted Kelly to shine on the song, but Matthew shut it down. Me and Kelly were really close. If you look on the second album, she's like, calls me her big brother. It was really cool. And she had told me that she really wanted to shine. And she didn't feel like she had the platform to do that. I'm going to tell Mona that I want you to lead it with me. I'm not thinking about who's bigger, who's going to be the bigger. Or none of that mattered. That was, mm. It's loyalty. So we tell Matthew, Matthew's like, you sure? I don't think that's a good idea. And I'm like, wait a minute, don't you manage all of them? How you right. gonna say that's not a good idea? Mm. You know, in hindsight, of course, I'd rather be yeah. having a record with Beyonce per se, singing back and forth with me if, when you look at it. But when you stand on something, that's what you stand on. So, but and it's all love and it's not like it's, it's bees or any, anybody's fault yeah. like that. It was always those managers. Y'all know, man. The, yes, the, the representatives yeah. in between, mm -hmm. the middleman. Cutting another deal. Exactly. Yes. Cut, and cut us right out. So this has kind of been a constant thing in Kelly's career where she couldn't really step outside of the shadow of Beyonce. At the time, Matthew Knowles wouldn't allow it. And even when she went solo, it just seems like every time she tried to do something on her own, Beyonce's name would always come up. And it is to be expected because Beyonce is one of the biggest artists of all time. So interviewers want to get information from her, but they can't because Beyonce doesn't do interviews. So instead they ask Kelly, but you can see it's frustrating for Kelly because it just makes her seem less important. The elephant in the room for me has always been second best. Wow. Okay. Hello, I ain't number two. Okay. That's actually the first time I've said it out loud, eh? <laughs> That's crazy. Kelly said herself that she felt second best. And unfortunately, that's how the media sees her in comparison to Beyonce. They feel like she's second best to Beyonce, which we all know that's not true. I think both Kelly and Beyonce are great in their own right. I wouldn't say they're really comparable because they are in two different lanes, but they are equals. However, some people in the media don't really see that and they always have the tendency to diminish Kelly in favor of Beyonce. Angie gave you flowers mm. for your ability to play second to Beyonce. Mm -hmm. I love B. I I know that she's a light, but I know that I'm a light too. Yeah. But it's also created such an interesting role for you where like you could have rested on your laurels and just been like, hey, I'm a part of this iconic group. Mm -hmm. My best friend's the biggest star in the world. We kick ass, we're awesome. Yes, but and, her, and her best friend slash sister is one of the big stars in the world too. <laughs> like. We both shine together. It's just a cycle and a space for all of us to open up doors for each other instead of compare. Don't be so limited. And that's, I feel like people who compare are limited in their minds mm -hmm. and they limit themselves. And so do not, don't do that to other people. So in that interview, you saw how the host Rosenberg tried to sun Kelly and she had to check him and say, no, I'm a star too. I shine just as bright. And there was a time that she did feel second best, but she doesn't feel that way now. Clearly, she's walking in her power now and she's tired of people trying to play her. And I kind of want to use this to segue into the whole story of her storming off of the Today Show. They ran this story because they wanted to make her seem like she was a diva and difficult to work with. Apparently, Kelly walked off the set because the dressing rooms were not up to par. It was basically a closet, y'all. <laughs> there was no space in there. And she requested another room and they were like, no, nah, you can't have the bigger room because Jennifer Lopez has the bigger room and you're not as big as Jennifer Lopez. So you are gonna sit here and take this closet. And Kelly was not here for that because <laughs> she's been on the Today Show several times before. She's actually guest hosted with Hoda 
and I believe that she has had better rooms before. So she knows they could have accommodated her with better rooms, but they didn't want to do that because they didn't feel like she was as important. Also, they're trying to run the story that Kelly left the set because she was upset that they questioned her about Beyonce earlier that day. What do you think about your friend Beyonce? She's like your sister. Of you guys course. literally grew up together. She's stepping into country. So proud of were, her. I know, but were you surprised? And what do you think about it? I'm so proud of her. Yeah. So happy for her. Yeah, she, it's incredible. Yes. Now, Kelly was obviously annoyed with the Beyonce question, but she kept it cute. And honestly, I don't think this was the reason why she stormed off the set the way they make it seem. I actually believe the dressing room story because Hoda pretty much confirmed it. I have great love and admiration for Kelly Rowland. Mm -hmm. I adore her. She the can best. share my dressing room. We'll be in it together. <laughs> she doesn't want to share her dressing room with you, Hoda. She wants her own. And see, this is why she walked away. Now, I'm not going to say I 100% agree with Kelly just walking away from something that she signed up to do. It was a bit unprofessional, if I'm being honest. However, they were playing in Kelly's face and she felt disrespected and she decided to leave. And you know she had to feel disrespected for her to just get up and do that because Kelly normally doesn't do that. She doesn't have that type of reputation at all. And a lot of people were coming to her defense. So that lets you know that her reputation is not the way the Today Show was trying to make it seem. But she is a woman who knows her worth and she's tired of being minimized and seen as second best. Anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.